Hello, uh, and welcome to 31 Days of Halloween Beasts, uh, Day 3. Uh, I am your host of this, uh, lovely ensemble of, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, Gary Hill. And, uh, with me tonight is a very special guest you'll be hearing very shortly. Um, be a familiar voice, you can commit that to your memories. Uh, maybe he will con con convince you to, um... Not memories. I meant to say memories, people. So that's the subject of this film, though. And, uh, maybe it will make you want to, uh, drive, bike, swim, or possibly a motorboat. Uh, see, back again. Mine's in the gutter. Uh, to this lovely feature. And, uh, here he is right now to tell you about it. Welcome to another episode of the Cinema Beef Podcast's special October celebration, 31 Days of Howling Beasts. My name is X, and you may know me as a co-host of Kiss the Goat, or you may not. You may know me for completely different reasons, all of which are perfectly legal under most state laws. You may not know me at all. If that's the case, hello. I'm charmed to make your acquaintance. It's lovely shoes you're wearing. Every guest on the Cinema Beef Podcast this month has chosen a movie with the word Beast in the title. And I'm in your ear holes right now to talk about a movie called The Beast That Killed Women. Which is great because the title is precisely what the movie's about. Not like other movies with far more complicated titles like Inception or Munster Go Home. Who knows what those could be about? But The Beast isn't the real draw here. Released in 1965, The Beast That Killed Women stars, and I'm quoting the opening credits here, Miami Beach's Most Lovely Nudists. That's right, this movie's all beehives and boobs. I'm not even sure any of the characters have names. You have to tell them apart by hair color and breast type. It's like, hey, there's the redhead. Oh, that's the woman with black hair done up in a bouffant. Oh, that's the chick with torpedo tits. This movie takes place at a groovy Miami nudist camp. There are tiki torches, shuffleboard, volleyball, a place to swim, and tons of that gorgeous Florida sunshine. Some of the girls get the cheap rooms in the barracks where they are forced to sleep in bunk beds. Others stay in wicker Tahitian-type cabanas with no door. And that spells doom for one redhead who falls asleep in a green blouse and... A pair of magenta hot pants. I can't tell if those are supposed to be pajamas or just what folks were wearing at the time. But that woman's dragged out of her cabana by the beast mentioned in the title. The titular beast, as you would. As you will. As it happened. This creature ragdolls the woman around for a while before leaving her dead down by the lake. There's really no suspense as to what the beast is. I mean, you can see it bouncing around through the trees during the opening scenes. It's an ape. It, it's someone in an ape suit. It's not even a good ape suit, which raises questions immediately. Why is there an ape on the loose in Florida? Why has it targeted this particular nudist camp? How much do you figure that ape suit costs to rent from the local costume store? And how much is he pulling down per year? After taxes. Of course, the cops are on the case. One of my favorite parts of the movie is when the police and medical staff carry the corpse of the first victim right through the middle of a nude volleyball game. The players stop for a moment, pay their naked respects to the woman, I guess, and then carry on with the game. This is rich storytelling at its finest. Director Barry Mann, who at one time was Errol Flynn's agent, yeah, no shit, doesn't beat around the bush with this movie. That's because there isn't any. It feels like half of this movie is scenes of women walking away from the camera, their hind ends shining in the sun. They got their tops pulled off and those wayfarers on, baby. When women are walking towards the camera, they're topless, but they're all wearing panties. So there's never any full frontal nudity in this movie, which seems sort of incongruous for a movie about a nudist camp. I'll give points to this movie for not only portraying white women. There are black women here, too, which seems awfully progressive for an exploitation movie from the mid-60s. But the way the scenes are composed between the women is just hilarious. Most of the time, they sort of stand boob to boob and talk about how scared they are. It's like those scenes from Hee Haw, where the girls pop up from behind hay bales just to tell old knock-knock jokes. It's not even exposition. It's not moving the story forward. Forward. Wait, is there a story? 
I'm confused. I've confused. I've confused myself. Anyway, at night the beast comes. Now, how this ape kills people is somewhat of a mystery to me. It sort of shakes a woman to death. It throws one dude into a lake, but he doesn't die. So really, you've got a movie where only one person dies. That goes against the title. This movie should have been called The Beast That Killed Woman. But as we all know, that was Chris Benoit. The way the police decide a gorilla is responsible is also pretty great. During an interview, a cop asks a woman, Do you think it was a man? And the woman says, Yes, I think it could have been a man. And then the cop says, Do you think it could have been some kind of ape? Or gorilla? Yes, the woman says. I do think it was an ape. Buddy, that is one hell of a leap of logic. So The Beast That Killed Women is, after all, an exploitation movie, and many of the things that we hope to see never come to fruition. There's no cooter, no dong, no blood, and no HLA. That's hot lesbian action for those of you that are out of the loop. So why the hell should anyone watch this movie? Well, I can't believe I'm saying this. But you've got to see the square dance scene. Guys in long shorts dancing with topless women on a concrete slab while terrible pseudo-Western music plays. Pretty sure it's stock music that was just titled Cowboy. It's awkward, and it's really, really weird. You can also see Juliette Anderson, who played the character of Aunt Peg in tons of 1970s porn in the role of Miss Johnson. She's a policewoman, and the cops use Miss Johnson as bait for the beast in an attempt to capture it. Anderson says four whole words in this entire movie, and she keeps all of her clothes on, so if that interests you, you're probably watching the wrong flick. Critics and film theorists say that if you take any genre movie, say horror, action, and you take out the big set pieces like the murders or explosions, what's left over should still constitute a good movie. Now, the concept here is that a movie shouldn't rely on gimmicks to draw a crowd. That's fine. The Beast That Killed Women doesn't really have any set pieces, and it's not a good movie. But if you're a fan of 1960s fashion, people traipsing naked or mostly naked through the woods and wretched dialogue, then you're going to find a whole lot to like in The Beast That Killed Woman. Women. And you know what? Good for you. Good for you. Hey, if you're so inclined, take a listen to Kiss the Goat, where you can hear my lovely wife Cootie, Chef Elle McPherson, and myself talk about devil movies. We're on the Legion Podcast Network, and you can find the show streaming like the wind on most of your favorite podcast servers. Check out other episodes of Cinema Beef, too, especially the ones I'm on, because those, of course, are the best ones. Thanks for listening, and remember, next time you're partially naked in Miami with all of your half-nude friends... Watch out for dudes in ape suits. Apparently, that's just a real hazard down there. And it wasn't that fun, kids. Um, just a lot of for you guys. Uh, listen to that show, uh, Kiss the Goat. It, it is on the Legion pa- uh, Podcast Network. Look for bonus stuff on Legion Patreon for him. Day four will include a, a lovely feature film that's often featured on, you know, riff tracks and your... Mystery Science Theater 3000s. It is a stone cold classic anyway, featuring the great Tor Johnson. It is the Beastie Yucca Flats. It'll be re- recorded and reviewed by yours truly. So we'll see you all again for day four of 31 Days of Howling Beasts.